Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be going over the facade pattern which is one of my favorite design patterns available because it really makes your code so much cleaner to write and also most importantly it makes it really easy to refactor your code in the future. So without any further ado, let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so that you can start building your dream projects sooner. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Now, before we jump into the code of the facade pattern, I first want to talk a little bit about what it is and why it's so important to use. And essentially, the entire idea behind the facade pattern is to make it easy for your code to change in the future. So the idea of this is that you create a facade between your complex code and your actual business logic code that you're writing. So a really good example, which is the code that we're going to be using, is the fetch API built into the browser. It allows you to query APIs and get certain data from APIs, but it's kind of cumbersome to use, and most likely you're going to trade it out later for something like Axios. And the idea of the facade pattern is that not only does it make it so much easier to use these complex things such as fetch, but it also makes it really, really easy to replace in the future, which is in my opinion, the reason it is so, so useful. So let's jump into a code example. On the left side of my screen, we have two functions, one for getting users and one for getting the user's post. And they're both very similar. They both call this fetch API from the JSON placeholder API and they're getting users in the first one and post in the second one, but all of the contents of this fetch method are the same. We have the same method. We have these headers that we have to pass along to tell fetch that we're actually getting JSON data. And then we're also converting that response to JSON so we can actually use it inside of our application. And this is a lot of code that's not really directly tied to getting a user. It's all kind of information that fetch needs and the rest of your code really doesn't care about. So what we're going to do is implement the facade pattern and essentially create a facade between the implementation of fetch and the actual API we're going to use inside of get users. So essentially we're going to create a function which does all of this information and all we have to do is pass it the information that changes, such as in our case, this URL is the thing that's different between this function and this function. And also down here, all we're doing is looping through all of our users getting their post and then printing out their name and number of posts on the side, just so we can make sure that all the changes we make still work. So we should get the same output later on. So let's create that function now. We're just gonna call it git fetch. And this is going to take a URL. As you can see here, we have our URL and we're also going to take parameters because this is actually passing parameters to our URL. So let's take the URL and the params. And what we wanna do is a very similar thing to up here. So let's just copy all of this code for fetch paste it into our git fetch, and we're gonna replace this entire section with our URL because we wanna fetch for a particular URL. We wanna make sure that we're using git and we're sending that content type of application JSON. The last thing we had to do is just append our params onto the end of the query string. So we can just get our query string here is going to be equal to object.entries for params because what we're going to do is params is going to look something like this. It's gonna say user ID is equal to one, for example. So the key is going to be the actual param, in our case here, user ID, and this value is going to be the value after the equal sign. So by saying here, object.entries, what we're doing is we're getting an array for each one of these. So we're going to have here, this is going to be converted to an array, and inside of that array, we're gonna have user ID and one, just like this. So we can just map over that. So we're gonna have a param, and for each one of our params, all we wanna do is return a string. And that string is just going to have at the very beginning, it's going to have our param of zero, which in our case is user ID. And then we wanna say equal, and then we wanna get param here of one. And that param one is going to be equal to our user ID. In this case, it's just one. So now let's close that all off. And the last thing we wanna do is just join this array together on the and symbol. So essentially we're concatenating them all to create a correct query string. And this code right here doesn't really matter too much. It's just implementation of the fetch function, which we're trying to hide from the rest of our program. Now we can just append this to the end of our query or our URL just by adding it in like this, paste that down and close that off. And now we can replace our get fetches. Also make sure that this is properly, there we go. 
Now let's replace our fetches up here with git fetch. And we can just remove this. Just like, whoops, that. And all of the code inside of here we no longer need. We just need to pass it our user ID, which is equal to the user ID parameter we're passing to this function. We can do the same thing up here, but we don't need any of this code down here. We could just remove all that. So immediately you see that with this facade pattern, We've cleaned up our fetch functions for git users and git user post, and it's really simple. It just says git fetch, we pass it a URL, and we pass it parameters. That is just logical code that makes sense to read. We've made our API cleaner by creating this facade. This contains all of our ugly code that connects to fetch, and it outputs just this clean code that we can use inside of our application. And if we save that, you can see we're getting an error over here, and that is because by default, params is going to be null, so we wanna just make sure we set that to an object by default. If we don't pass one, in this example, we don't pass params. Now, if we save that, you can see we're getting the people's names and the number of posts that they've written. So already, we've seen one of the big advantages of the facade pattern in that it cleans up all of our code. We no longer have to copy paste all of this headers and method stuff all over the place. It's all hidden away in one part of our code. We can even put this in some other module somewhere and we can import it anytime we need it and it just cleans up our code to look much nicer and easier to write. But one of the really big advantages is when you want to actually change the implementation. If we wanted to change to use Axios instead of fetch, now that we have this facade set up, it's actually really easy to do. And I've already imported Axios into here. I have the script tag from the CDN. You can include this into your own application if you're following along. But anyway, all we need to do is we'll just copy this git fetch for now so we can see both of them side by side. And we can just replace our fetch here with a call to Axios. And the way Axios works is you actually just pass it an object. So we have our URL, which is our URL. We're going to have our method, which is git. And we're also not needing to pass any headers at all. We can just pass in the params like this, and we don't even need this query string at all. So now all we need to do is just do this final dot then. But in our case for Axios, we just return res.data, and that's going to be the same as res.json for fetch. Now let's comment out this code here and actually make sure that this works. So if we save this, you can see on the side, we're still getting all of our results, but now we're actually using Axios instead of fetch. And it was so easy to change over. We only had to change it in one place. While if we had our old code, like at the beginning, we'd have to go to every single place in our code where we used fetch and replace it with Axios. And that's very, very error prone. You're bound to make mistakes doing that. But with this facade pattern, you only have to change it in one place instead of having to change it everywhere, so you're much less likely to make mistakes, and in the end, your code is going to look much cleaner with these really nice functions that you've created, as opposed to having to use these really ugly functions everywhere. In general, the idea of the facade pattern is to take some form of API that's either difficult to use, or ugly, or not nice, and create a nice API out of it. In our case, we created this nice git fetch function out of the kind of ugly fetch API that the browser gives you. Then we can use that nice API everywhere we are going to use the old API, and it just works right out of the box. Also, most importantly, it makes refactoring way, way easier because we only have to change our code in one place instead of having to change it everywhere inside of all of our code, which is easy to mess up and easy to miss. And that's all there is to the facade pattern. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.